Have you ever whispered a prayer to a guardian angel, seeking comfort and protection? While the idea might seem appealing, the truth is, the concept of guardian angels isn't rooted in the Bible. In fact, relying on angels for protection can unintentionally take our focus away from the one true protector, God himself. The concept of having your own guardian angel is extremely popular today. Popular TV shows, books, and music have featured the idea of guardian angels and have emphasized the concept that each person has their own guardian angel. But what does the Bible say about this? Does each person have their own guardian angel? Growing up with the idea that you have your own guardian angel is extremely common. Most adults believe they have a guardian angel. From Christian experience, we grew up with the idea that we each have our own personal guardian angel who looks after us and protects us. Stories like these abound among Christians and non-believers across the globe. There is a strong belief in guardian angels. However, guardian angels are not biblical. The Bible never tells us that each person has their own guardian angel. God is the one who protects us, not angels. Psalm chapter 91 verse 116. It is not healthy for believers to trust in angels for protection nor is it wise for believers to become obsessed with angels. If a person is trusting, relying upon, or praying to a guardian angel, they have made the idea of a guardian angel an idol in their life. The Lord is clear that we must not worship idols. Exodus chapter 20 verse 4, 1 John chapter 5 verse 21. A fascination with angels and the worship of angels is not a new concept as we see this was already occurring in Paul's lifetime. In his letter to the church of Colossae, Paul wrote, Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. Colossians chapter 2 verse 18. The concept of guardian angels is a belief that mankind has made up over time. The Bible does not present, inform, or suggest the idea of guardian angels. While there is no such thing as guardian angels, there are angels. God created angels before he created the world, however, angels are created beings. Angels are servants of God and obey him, Psalm chapter 103 verse 20. God can send angels to protect us, but the angels themselves are only obeying God's commands, Psalm chapter 91 verse 11. All of the adoration, praise, and worship belong to God. No angel is as powerful, glorious, or mighty as God. The Bible tells us that angels worship the Lord and submit to his glorious presence. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 414. This passage of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 414 also highlights the truth that Jesus is superior to the angels because he is God in the flesh. Angels worship the Lord, not the other way around. In the same way, we need to worship Jesus and not angels. The Bible tells us that angels do not accept worship. Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. Revelation chapter 22 verse 8 9 records John's experience with an angel in heaven, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. Therefore, all praise, glory, and worship need to be directed to God. Angels did not create the world, the stars, the animals, and mankind. God created all things including the angels, Genesis chapter 1-2, and he died in order for us to obtain salvation, John chapter 3 verse 16 17. Many people try to use Jesus' statement in Matthew 18:10 to argue for the existence of guardian angels, but this is an erroneous interpretation of Jesus' words. Jesus states, see that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven, Matthew chapter 18 verse 10. This verse does not tell us that we have guardian angels. What this verse does tell us is that angels serve mankind by protecting them at God's command. The emphasis is placed on the angels always looking to the face of the Father in heaven, they are not on earth protecting a person whenever they choose. The importance rests on the angels obedience to the Father, not so much their actual role of protecting. Angels can protect believers, but it is always at the will of God. God knows all things, so he knows when a person is in need of help, deliverance, and safety. The Lord does send angels to help us as Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 states. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? In this passage of scripture, angels are referred to as ministering spirits. This is to emphasize the truth of angels being servants to God. 
Angels are very important. However, they are not God. The Lord can send angels to protect us, but the ultimate protector is God himself. The angels in heaven today are only good angels as all of the evil angels fell at the same time of Satan's rebellion. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12 14, Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 12 18. Heaven is the home of all good angels, and their entire purpose is to serve, worship, and obey God. It gives them great joy to be servants of God. In addition to protecting believers at God's command, angels also function as messengers of Yahweh, Luke chapter 1 verse 11 20, give God's guidance to believers, Acts chapter 8 verse 26, and serve believers in accordance with God's will, 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 5 7. The only angels that we are given names of in the Bible are Michael, Daniel chapter 10 verse 13, Jude chapter 1 verse 9, Revelation chapter 12 verse 7, and Gabriel, Daniel chapter 8 verse 16, Luke chapter 1 verses 19, 26, 38. We are never told that they are specifically assigned to a person as their guardian angel. As in the case of Michael and Gabriel, they are both mentioned as talking to and helping different people, not just a single person. Each angel most likely has a name. However, it is plausible that the names are not given in order for mankind not to be tempted to worship them. God is the only one we should worship as he is the protector of our souls. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3. 1 John chapter 5 verse 18. Many people find comfort in the idea of having their own guardian angel, but the concept of guardian angels is not biblical and should not be practiced by believers. Friends, true comfort and lasting protection don't come from imagined figures. They come from a real, loving God who walks with us every step of the way. This isn't to undermine the role of angels in the Bible, for they serve as God's messengers and instruments of his will. However, they are not meant to be intermediaries between us and God, nor are they replacements for his direct protection. Invest time in prayer, studying the Bible, and worshipping with other believers. As you build a stronger connection with him, you'll experience his presence and protection more profoundly. Recognize that while angels exist, they are not personal protectors. Instead, place your trust solely in God, the ultimate source of strength and security. Help others understand the truth about guardian angels and encourage them to find comfort and protection in the loving arms of God. Remember, God is always with you. He is your protector, provider, and comforter. Lean on him fully, and walk confidently knowing you are never alone. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. God bless you.